Bruno Flavich is my younger sister, which I refer to as like my most immature offering because I didn't know what I was doing, but funny enough, it's still my most successful. And then Ifile was like, uh, when I was, you know, still like going through like this whole thing of being so successful and then people hating on me and then I wasn't used to that and also trying to fight back with success and say, I'm richer than you, I'm richer than you. And then until I figured out that actually that's not the way to combat that. And then this is Tuto where I finally found balance between, you know, the money and the fame and the what's real, what's not, friends, you know, criticism, hate, like, you know what I'm saying, the balance. And um, it's my most personal album. And um, yeah, let me know for the love, everybody. So the first four songs, I'm gonna play um, back to back, because they kind of like um, tell one story. The title of the first song is Confused, and then the second song is I Wasn't Ready For You, and then the, f the third song is an interlude that was uh, done by Ricky Rick, and the fourth song is Destiny. So it kind of tells the story of me being jaded and then um, meeting someone that I wasn't ready for. And then the interlude is called as Karma Would Have It. Then I meet someone else, and you know, the same thing that I did to someone happened to me. So if I had to narrate the four songs, I'd end up with something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's been a year since we broke up And half of it I wasn't sober Emotions bottle like a soda But I'm doing well so far They say I got the city on my shoulders But honestly I'm losing focus Cause I used to know love But now I'm used to know love I don't know, I mean A lot of people think love is like This perfect situation that you get into And everything falls into place And it's never that You know, love is something you gotta work at and you gotta train yourself and you've gotta it's a very it's, it's, it's a very personal album I decided you know I'm at the place in my career where I don't always have to make songs that that are gonna compete in the club or make songs that are big and like you know for the commercial industry I've done it. I've already sold you know however many copies. I did one song, which is the way that I came out like yeah, you know, just turn up. So I decided with this album, I wanted to make music that I really love. You know, music that I grew up to. Music that I'm proud of, not to say I'm not proud of my other records, but I feel like I was trying to please people because, you know, my first album was so successful. So I was trying to make another record or a better record. And I, this, with this album, I took a different approach and I said, Joe, I'm going to lock myself in the studio for almost like two years. And we made, I'm sure, like 150 songs and then we had to cut it down to 16. And the funny thing is, like, the 16 that ended up on the album, are, like, the songs that we made, like, the past six months, like, at the end, when I really thought I was done, like, then we, then I started going through some real stuff, like, you know, like, this song is, like, actually, like, it's an actual true story, where this girl, like, broke my heart, and then the previous song is a true story where I broke someone else's heart, and I think those are real stories that people can relate to from, like, whether you're like six years old, you know, like I had a girl break my heart when I was in grade two. I still hate her till today. <laughs> Up until like you're like 40, so I, 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 I just, I re realized that my fan base was funny. Like usually you have like someone who has kids listening to him, but the adults don't know him. 
or like people who listen, or you have like adults who grew up with hip hop and that's all they listen to. But I have like fans from like five years old, or, you know what I'm saying, all the way to adults. So I need to, I needed to find a way to relate to all of them without sounding like Justin Bieber or do the very draw. So, so, so I found like real stories and you know, those are some of the stories. And moving on. I hope you guys don't get bored because the album is very chill. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you guys can sit through the album and appreciate it as much as I do. The next song is uh, of all the songs I've done in my career. This is the, this is the most special song I've ever done. Uh, it's a song about my dad. It's called Superman. And I wrote it because I felt like men are not appreciated as much as they should be. Good men are not appreciated as much as they should be. Every time you hear about men, it's men are trash. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um and I felt like yo, actually my dad wasn't trash. Like I, I had a good father and he taught me so many things and I wrote this song about him at two AM. I said that's probably my dad late night now. That's two to the num the album is named after her, next to her is terrific. And uh, I wrote the song called Superman and I featured one of his favorite Artist of all time it goes by the name of Temple Tola. I hope you guys uh, you know, dig the song too. where I come from, just to remind people like how we started. And it's one of the most fun songs. I hope you guys dig it as well. It reminds me of Hizo Hizo when I listen to it. I don't know why. Yeah. Wait, okay. I made a mistake. <laughs> the next song is Bentley Coop. It's a song that I wrote uh, when uh, I just bought, uh, I'm sure you can relate. There's another Bentley driver there. Yeah, I just, uh, and uh, yeah. I wrote a song in my car. This is how it goes. I'm, I'm not ashamed of my failures. Of my failures. But at the same time, same time, I'm not ashamed of my success. success. My mind made it. Woo! Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest of them all? I just bought two cribs and I'm about to buy more. The Next song uh, is titled New Go. Yo, 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 this wasn't originally on the album, I just made it because I said some shit on my mind. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the part of the album where, you know, um, me and Ali were like, um, we, we were like making music for musicians, really. You know, it wasn't like just for the normal ear, you know, it was just for like producers to go and listen and say, yo, how did they do that? How did they do this? And I've never done that on my album. People don't know that I'm actually a producer as well. So, uh, Bentley Coop, I produced on that song as well. Uh, and, which, uh, well, you'll see the credits on the album, you know, I, I really applied myself as an artist, as a musician, not just as a rapper. So me and Ali had a lot of fun doing <coughs> You know, that section of the album and I really I had found like um, a place in my heart where it was cool for me to talk about my success you know like a lot of people make you when you come up people love you because you're humble some people are humble because they broke right and then once you make it then you can't talk about it because then you arrogant you can't talk about your success, but then you don't have any positive stories in the hood. And kids in the hood think that the only way to be successful is to be, you know, a doctor or like this, you know, great success stories. And I'm not talking about not dissing anybody, 
But I'm talking like, it, since I was a kid, I always asked myself and my parents and my friends, like, yo, man, why does that guy drive a Bentley? Like, was that car made for him when he was born? Was it made for that guy? Or did that guy work to get to that point? And when I realized that you actually work to get to any point, once you open your mind to think that you can actually do anything, you could be the richest man in the world if you want to be, if that's what you desire, if it's not about stunting on anybody, if it's just for you, if you want to do it for the right reasons, God will allow you to do that. If you believe you could have 40,000 people in the stadium, you can actually do it if you find the right place in your heart. And that's what that's that's the section in the album when I was talking about, you know, my Rolexes and whatever. It's not to say anybody else is lesser than me. It's just to make sure that the kid in the hood knows that it's possible to, if you just believe in God and you trust in God and you work hard, you can do anything in, 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 in this world. And that's what like that section in the album when I talk about that. And then now we get into the turn up section, you know what I'm saying? I've got a few songs here that might end up as singles, you know, this way it's gonna get a bit jiggy and you know, man, you might enjoy that part. It starts with a skit by one of my friends. His name is Didi. Life was never the same, not P. Didi. Didi from... <laughs> yeah, and it's called Top Floor and it goes into a song called Top Cheyenne. Yeah, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this part. It's a king, man. 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 It's a king, I'm still feeling jiggy. Yeah. Uh, I got too much money for my age. Yeah. Niggas falling cause they running at my pace. Oh, my Mondays are like oh, any other day. Money in the car here, you know what I'm saying? I let it shine in that song. I let it shine a little bit. The next song is Tito Moeni, but you guys know it, so we're going to skip that. No? Should we play? I just, yeah, let's turn up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just play the first verse, man. Yeah. Yeah. Where you going? Are you gonna get your 10 rent? mission to clear it and we finally cleared it and you know I can finally play it to you guys. Hope you guys love it as much. I just want to do God's will. And he has allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. songs that I co-produced with Ali and Gemini. I told you I was a producer. <laughs> uh, the next song is also a, a very special song. It features one of my favorite MCs. It goes by the name of Black Dot from the legendary Roots crew. For you young kids who don't know, just go Google the Roots. It's Grammy Award winning. And um, yeah, we recorded it out in Quad Studios. If you don't know Quad Studios, that's where Tupac got shot in Times Square. It was something like this. Yeah, another special uh, fact about the songs that it was produced by the same kid who produced Doc Chabeleza. So we hadn't worked since that song, and then he got to produce this song. <laughs> I never need them, steady stunting on my demons 
It's titled Tuto. I hope you dig it. Yeah, so uh, I didn't mention some people. The first song features a lady by the name of Hua Pili. If you don't know as well, you can Google. What? So, <laughs> a guy called Seho, who's on, on the label. Uh, Ricky Rick, I mentioned. Tepo Tula. Seho again. Life is never the same. Nadia yeah. Nakai. And, <laughs> and Black Thor. <laughs> Uh, and those are the features of the album. It's a 16 track album. I hope I explained enough for you to understand some of the songs. I don't want to explain everything. Some of the things you know you have to like figure out by yourself. And um, go tell people about it if you like it. Go tell people about it if you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I really, really appreciate you guys coming today and um, sharing the night with me, spending the night with me, especially the women. It's a bad joke. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you guys have questions? Anybody wants to talk? No? Oh, producers. Uh, on, um, most of the album was produced by Ali, the guy I found at Liquid Chefs drinking Heineken. And then I almost said, I told you the story. Yeah. Uh, he, he produced most of the album at my house. We kind of like took my garage and um, put a carpet on the floor and we turned it into a studio, we made the whole album uh, at my house, you know, and that's why I guess I couldn't be in a relationship because all the women were leaving me because I was making noise at my house, but that's another story. Uh, Gemini Major, um, Gobbler, yeah, Gobbler is through. Yo, I see you, baby. Hey, you kidding me right now. He's on the last he's joining, he's on everybody's joining. He's charging me too much money though, so if you guys could just talk to him. What? <laughs> uh, Anati's on the album. Um, yo, who else? DJ Abza, I mentioned. Um, this kid called Finesse and a bunch of his boys. I don't know the rest of the guys, but they produced the song Black Thought. And Casper Nevis is on the album as a producer as well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of work. All the songs that you like were produced by me. For real. What? Um, there, are no, there are no ghost writers on this album. It's a hip hop album, so yeah, you you 